All right, uh, thanks for joining our uh, webinar series with Barnhart. Uh, today I'll be presenting on proof load testing and mockups. Uh, my name is Carter Spence. I work with uh, in sales for Project Equipment Group. It is our branch of Barnhart that deals with specialized equipment. Um, we also deal with load testing. So I'm actually head up Barnhart's load testing outfit for all, for all of our uh, in-house equipment. So we fabricate uh, equipment that we have designed and we load test for projects. So uh, I manage that part of Barnhart. So I'm uh, excited to speak with you guys about uh, Barnhart's uh, services in, when it comes to load testing and mockups. So we'll spend most of our time talking about proof load testing and then we'll spend briefly uh, talking about uh, mockups. So first of all, what is proof load testing? Proof load testing is an operation that's performed to certify the rated capacity and the function of a piece of equipment. It's usually a piece of lifting equipment. We need to make sure that the capacity that we give in this piece of equipment, uh, can, that it is actually, um, can actually lift that piece, that capacity. So we we'll talked about what it is, and let's also talk about what it is not. Uh, it is not brake testing. There, there is a time and place for brake testing in our industry but when I say we are proof load testing, we are not taking the piece of equipment to failure. So a lot of things are designed with a safety factor of three to one or four to one, and sometimes even five to one safety factors. We're not reaching anywhere near those safety factors when we're testing for proof load testing. So we're usually just doing a little bit above the rated capacity just to certify that that rated capacity uh, is good. It's also not a mock-up. We will talk about mock-ups later on, but mock-ups are similar in that they are something that certifies or ensures something, but, but it's not proof load testing. And then finally, it is not load weighing. So we, we do provide load weighing services, but that is not what we talk about when we're talking about proof load testing. So why do you proof load test? Uh, number one reason is assurance, safety. You need to make sure that the piece that you designed, if you give it a capacity, a rated capacity, you need to make sure that it can actually lift or hold that capacity. So you need to uh, double check that the capacity is sufficient for what you are going to use it for. You also, some, some equipment has moving parts. And so you need to make sure that it actually functions as intended. Uh, that things connect properly. If it has hydraulics, that the hydraulics work properly. Everything's plumbed up all right. So it's more of a uh, function test and a load test at the same time. And then after you've put the piece of equipment through the ringer, right, you, you put it, uh, put the rated capacity and then above the rated capacity, you put that load on that piece. You need to make sure that there's no permanent deformation or damage as a result of doing that. So you're basically testing it to its worst case scenario you need to make sure that nothing has permanently stayed with as far as damage is concerned. So in addition to the safety reasons of why you would load test, um, you need to think about the regulations for load testing. So there are some standards that govern our industry right, when, in regards to load testing. Uh, we, probably the, the most detailed one is the ASME B30 standards. So ASME is American Society of Mechanical Engineers and their B30 standards outlined for lots of different kind, kinds of equipment, what are the standards on if something should be load tested and how should it be load tested? So that's really what we go by when we think about load testing is we go by those ASME B30 standards. But other organizations have regulations regarding load testing as well, including OSHA, nuclear standards, and ISO 9001. All of those kind of have different requirements when it comes to load testing. So what types of equipment are load tested? Most often we think of rigging below the hook devices. Um, the, those include slings. So those could be wire rope chokers, synthetic slings, um, rope slings uh, could be tested. Shackles, as you see in picture on the right, those are pull testing shackles. So those hook to a load, so those need to be load tested. Spreader bars uh, are load tested. Lifting beams and lifting fixtures. So this is an example of a Barnhart cool tool. This is our moving counterweight cantilever system. Uh, we use it to lift um, underneath obstructions and basically cantilever into uh, spaces to pick things up. And so it, it's a fairly complicated tool. So the counterweight 
the counterweight gearbox in red actually travels back and forth. So when we're load testing this, you know, we're load testing the entire below the hook apparatus. Uh, so because it's a below the hook device, it technically needs to have a load test. So anything from the smallest little shackle to the largest looking fixture pictured here and even larger, all of it needs to be load tested per the standards. Other equipment that gets load tested is lifting equipment. This can include hoists, uh, cranes, right? overhead cranes and standard cranes. Uh, hydraulic jacks and cylinders need to be load tested, as well as gantry systems. Uh, so all of this and more, if you read this, the standards, might include some other equipment as well. Uh, but these are the ones that kind of pertain to our industry and what Barnhart does. So when do you do load test? The answer is the standards point to it. So as you can see here, a uh, screenshot of our ASME B30 standards that sort of outline when to do a load test. But usually it's just whenever the certification of the capacity and the function are needed. And so this includes new equipment. So if we fabricate a new piece of equipment uh, for a job or for general use, it, it needs to be load tested. So Barnhart, we fabricate a lot of equipment just to use one time on a project. And if it's a below the hook device or if it fits the ASME standards of needing a load test, we load test it, even though we're gonna only use it once. But we also load test things that we're gonna use generally. So all of our spreader bars, our below the hook devices that we use on projects, you know, multiple projects, we will also test those and certify those. Existing equipment might need to be load tested. And there's a certain uh, criteria on, on whether or not it needs to be. Uh, one of them being a significant repair. If you make a significant repair to the lifting device or a piece of equipment, it might need to be load tested. Sometimes a piece of equipment needs recertification for whatever reason. So this most often happens if maybe the tag or label on the piece of equipment is no longer visible, and there might be some questions on what it's rated for, or it may might know what it's rated for, they just can't trace it back to a load test. There's no proof that there was a load test done on it, and so it needs to be recertified. Uh, certain uh, facilities, uh, plants, and certain customers may require periodic testing. Uh, so the ASME standards don't require recertification, but some facilities will require that. So that's just something that might be specific to a job site. Anytime there's a significant modification performed, something needs to be load tested. This could be increasing the capacity by adding uh, extra welds or extra uh, structural reinforcement uh, to beef it up a little bit, um, it might, and it now has a new capacity, it needs to be load tested. Or if something needs to be applied to a new application, so if it was used for one specific operation, and then now you're trying to use it to do something else, it might see different loads or might see different uh, configurations, you might need to load test it then. Finally, less common, but still performed by Barnhart and others in our industry, are job specific assemblies. These are usually coming from a customer wanting to see our equipment loaded in a specific configuration. So even though all of our equipment individually is load tested, they want to see it load tested as an assembly, everything hooked together, everything the way it's going to be on the job. Let's go through some examples. This is an example of new equipment. This is a multi-pick point spreader bar that's designed by Barnhart. It is a very unique tool that we use on a lot of jobs. And we really like it because there's multiple hook points on the top and bottom, and so there's multiple configurations to use it in. It fits a variety of, of equipment and uses. But to test this, it it's becomes kind of complicated because there's no blanket capacity for it that you for everything you do. The capacity depends on the configuration. So you could be picked up in the center pick on the top and then uh, wide on the bottom that has a certain capacity versus just a straight up bridle. So the way we tested this piece of equipment is by doing worst case scenarios. So our engineers looked at it and said, what conditions do we put this bar in so that it results in the worst case for those uh, specific loading scenarios? And so the first worst case is maximum compression that you see uh, pictured on the right. We needed to say, what is the compression capacity? What are we gonna rate it at? And then let's test to 125% of that capacity. 
Second configuration would be maximum bending. What is the bending capacity and how do we proof load that bending capacity? And then finally, maximum tear out, the actual rigging holes. What is their capacity and how do we proof load test that, uh, that scenario? Here's an example of existing equipment. This is a piece of equipment for a customer. This is used for a specific use. Uh, it's to lift a, a piece of equipment in a nuclear facility. And this is a case where they needed it recertified because the standards had changed since they last used it. They hadn't used it in so long. It's used for one specific operation that they did in an outage probably 15 years ago. And they're getting ready to do that operation again. And since then, the standards have changed and required uh, more rigorous load testing uh, requirements. And so they needed it load tested before they could use it on their upcoming outage. So they reached out to us. And this is a great load test because there's a constraint. Uh, the constraint is the size. So because it's used for one specific arrangement, um, it, it needed that fixed bridle on the sides. So those trunnions on the sides coming down at a 53 degree bridle. So we actually had to test it at a 53 degree bridle to meet the customer's needs. And they were very pleased that we were able to do that for them. And then finally, here's an example on the assembly. Like I said, we were getting ready to use this equipment configuration on a job. And so the customer wanted us to load our equipment and prove that even though our engineering calculations proved that we could, that our equipment could hold the load, they wanted to see it and make sure that everything held up before doing it on the job. So there are a couple types of load tests. There are a couple types of load tests. Um, first being static load tests. So static is just things that um, need just a load applied and then held for a little bit and then the load taken off. So this could be either a pull test, usually common for rigging you know, below the hook devices and usually receive pull tests. Or it could be a compression test, which would be things like jacks, cylinders, things that push things uh, would be load tested via compression testing. The other type of load test is dynamic. Um, things like hoists that may have a traveling aspect to them so they can raise and lower. And then as in the, with the pictured here, is a Barnhart hoist that raises and lowers as well as travels back and forth along that beam. So all of that needed to be tested dynamically uh, prior to being used. So what is our load test process? So this sort of outlines Barnhart's process of load testing, which should be very similar to the rest of the industry, but we determine our test load, develop the load test plan, we perform the load test, we perform a post load test inspection, and then finally we generate the load certificate. So we'll kind of dive deep into these steps of the process and explain them in more detail. So the first is to determine the test load. And for what Barnhart usually tests, Barnhart equipment, uh, the often below the hook devices, uh, that's 125%. Shackles and slings might need to be tested to 200% per the standards. But that number comes straight from the standards. Uh, usually, I say 125% one, is most common because those are lifting devices, but the answer comes in the standards. But the manufacturer uh, might recommend a uh, higher load test, uh, or the standards might re recommend something different, or the job site may want to see a higher load test before, before being used. So, so always be sure to know what you're doing with it and that you've checked all of the different recommendations from the manufacturer or what the standards might say uh, for in regards to load testing. And then finally, you know, we, we get a que question a lot of what if I don't know the recommended working load limit, the maximum capacity? What if I don't know what the capacity is? And that's where engineering can come in. So we, we've done jobs in the past where somebody's come to us and said, hey, Barnhart, we, we use this tool for this specific job. We actually don't really know what it's rated for, and the tag has been scratched off, the tag has been removed. We don't know what its capacity is. Can you help us out? So eventually, we basically just do reverse engineering. So we take a look at fabrication drawings. If we know what material it's made out of, 
right? You can kind of reverse engineer it and recommend a capacity to use before before you actually use the bar and load test it from there. So those are just a couple of unique cases where engineering can help out a lot. Next, we develop the load test plan. So I'll go through some things to consider when it comes to developing the plan. First is what method are you going to use? Is it a static or a dynamic test? Can it, uh, based on what it, what equipment it is, can it be tested in a test machine? Um, the test machines are very common in our industry. Often used to pull pull test things like wire rope chokers and shackles. Now, pictured on the right, we're, we're testing those unpainted lengths. There, those little 90 degree U joints. We're testing those there. These are very great because they have such a high capacity in a relatively small footprint. And, and some of the ones that are designed to test wire rope chokers can be 80, 100 feet long uh, with a 3 million pound capacity. Um, but sometimes you can be limited with test machines in what can go in them. So you couldn't put a spreader bar inside this test machine because of its size. All right, so that's where cranes can be very helpful is you have all the space to test things that are rather large. I mean, you can test something that's 40 foot long, no problem in, in, in there. So cranes are really good for tests. And Barcar has a lot of cranes all over the entire country that are outfitted to do load tests uh, with weight or with pulling on whatever steel we have in the yard. Another way to do load tests, probably the most simple, is just ship weights and stack the weights up and pull on them. And that's how overhead cranes are often tested. It's just by shipping weight somewhere and uh, coming up on it. But one of the ways that we really like to load test things at Barnhart is hydraulically. So these are really great because you can test um, test things that are very high capacity in a relatively small footprint. So this yellow lifting beam that we're testing in the picture is a 600 ton rated capacity. So we were testing it to 125%, which would result in a 750 ton load test. And we're able to do it with four hydraulic jacks and structural equipment that Barnhart uses on projects. So equipment that we have laying in the yard that we could push against to apply the correct load on this lifting beam. So to find a crane to do something to 750 tons, one, find a crane that's big enough, two, find enough weight to stack up to get to that, and that's very cumbersome. It can be uh, very difficult. And so if we just have some jacks laying around, and some structural equipment, we're able to test it rather efficiently. Another thing to consider is, are there multiples? So in this load test, we had something to push against, right? We had a big girder with some links and some big old shackles that we could push against. But sometimes the best thing to push against is a multiple of what you're testing. So as example in this picture, we're testing two identical things by pushing them apart. So they're held together by these red links and you can put a hydraulic jack in there and push them apart so they get equal load. So you're able to test them both at the same time. So it just leads to efficiency doing it that way. But if you don't have a multiple and you need something to pull against or push against, sometimes maybe a load test fixture is required, as in this picture. So this, this load test tower is impressive, but one of the things that is shown that I like to highlight is this round lifting beam that we're testing in the middle, the way it's being used on the job site is, to, is bolted to a piece of equipment and lifted from there. Now to load test that, we have to load test it as if it were bolted to that piece. So what Barnhart did is we designed and fabricated a load test fixture to connect the round lifting beam to the rest of our equipment through load testing. So if we had a multiple, it would have been easy. We would have just been connecting the identical piece to it and then testing from there. But sometimes it might require building a load test fixture. Another thing to consider is how to measure the load. You need to build that into your load test plan. And those most common ways to measure the load for load tests is with load cells, as pictured on the right. So those can be either inline load cell as pictured or a compression load cell where you might you know, push on it. Another way to measure the load common with Barnhart load test is with pressure gauges. So most of our hydraulic load tests 
are tested using pressure gauges. So you would just connect a gauge up to the hydraulic jack and the pressure is a direct correlation to the load that is on that hydraulic jack. Another thing to consider when you're measuring load is that everything is calibrated. So just like there are standards on what needs to be load tested and how it should be load tested, there are standards on load measuring equipment and how it should be calibrated. So all of Barnhart's load measuring equipment for load tests is calibrated every year according to the proper standards. So as an example of a calibration certificate on the right. Another thing to consider when you're planning your load test is the accuracy of your load measuring equipment. So the accuracy needs to be taken into account when you're determining your test load, what you're going to be uh, applying to the equipment. You just need to assume that your equipment is the least accurate it could be. So if something is plus or minus 0.5% accuracy, you need to add 0.5% to your test load to make sure you're accounting for any possible inaccuracies in that measuring device. Next, we perform the load test. So you perform it according to the plan. So that could be either an engineer drawing or a set of instructions from a qualified person on how to uh, perform the load test. You need to make sure that there's qualified personnel. So if you're using a crane for a load test, you need to make sure that the person operating the crane is qualified to operate the crane. You need to make sure that the rest of the field crew has enough experience to do a perform load test safely. Speaking of safety, uh, Barnhart does a JHA prior to, prior to the load test. A JHA is just a job hazard analysis where we discuss what could go wrong and how to mitigate um, those risks. So that's an example form on the right. And we also do our load tests in a controlled environment. You don't want anybody just wandering around in the load test area where something might break, something might uh, fail, and, and that person be in danger. And you, you do it in such an environment that if it does fail, that the proper, the response to that failure uh, is mitigated. Uh, shock loading and things like that are all mitigated. And then throughout the load test, you're performing visual inspections. So you're incrementally loading the piece to, and constantly uh, looking at it to make sure that it's not failing along the way and that it, everything is hooked up properly. And then an important part of documentation for load tests is photos. So photos of both the arrangement so that someone can look later and say, how do they actually test this thing? They can take a look at those photos and get uh, get clues onto how they hook things up and how it was tested. And then also photos of the load reading. So we can look back and we have documentation that we actually tested it to the right load. Next, we perform a post load test inspection. This is most often done by a CWI, a certified weld inspector. For Barnhart, we have those on staff here. So on the right is an example of a weld inspection performed by one of our CWIs uh, before issuing the load tested piece of equipment to the customer. Other options for post load test inspection uh, can be non-destructive testing or mag particle testing. Uh, those are, and there are other methods, but those are the most common for kind of using machines to test whether there's permanent damage in the piece of equipment. And after the post load test inspection, if everything's good, there's no damage, we generate a load certificate. And there's certain pieces of information that show up on load certificates from Barnhart. And the first is a serial number and a device name. The serial number is really important because when we're getting ready to use this bar, it may be identical to another bar, another piece of equipment. We need to be able to differentiate the two and differentiate the load tests for the two of them. And so that's why every piece of equipment that gets load tested needs to have a serial number. Um, and that way you can trace that piece of equipment back to that specific load cert. Also what shows up on the load cert is the rated capacity or the working load limit. What is the required test load? Does it require 125%? Does it require 200%? What is the load that we needed to free flow test it? Finally, what is the device weight? What is the design standard? What are we, what are we basing our our whole load test off of what standards are we using? 
what equipment are you using to measuring measure the load? That goes into the accuracy. We need to be able to prove that we accounted for the proper accuracy of our measuring equipment. And then finally, what is the load instrument reading? Uh, just to certify that we did it. And we like to put pictures on our load test certs. We put pictures of the arrangement. We put pictures of the load test uh, reading there. And then finally, everything is saw, um, everything is signed off by a responsible person. Um, so usually an engineer could be another qualified person to do load tests, but we always sign it. Uh, so that's it for load testing. And now we'll switch and talk a little bit about mockups. So mockups are a very unique service that Barnhart can provide for customers. And they're similar to proof load testing in that it's to ensure safety. Uh, to make sure that uh, some, a method works, basically. Uh, but instead of being centered around the actual loads that equipment is going to see, it's usually centered around the feasibility of our method. And that usually results from concerns over obstructions and obstacles. So the picture on the right here uh, shows a very complicated job that we did with a very unique Barnhart tool. So we're using our 150-ton tip stick to lower this feed water heater through a hatch. Yeah, so it's a very unique project, a great method that the customer was very excited to see. So that, man, if this method works, then it would mean that my plant gets turned on quicker and ultimately it will save, save me money by getting the plant on faster. And so, but we want to, and then they came to us and said, but we want to make sure that this method will work before we sign off on it. So we're willing to have you guys do a mock-up for us to prove that you could do it this way. So that's what we did. We set up scaffolding to mimic the obstructions that were on site and the customer watched us perform this load test or this mock-up, uh, this mock excuse me. So what is our process for mock-ups? So number one is Barnhart will come in and we'll identify and we'll actually propose our method. Uh, so the picture on the right is using Barnhart's an encounterweight cantilever system to remove a butterfly valve. And this is a very unique uh, job that Barnhart was able to really set ourselves apart from uh, the rest of people trying to get this work because of how efficient it would, it would be. There's no need to cut out any obstructions. We'd be able to fly our piece in there with a crane and uh, pick up the butterfly valve and take it out uh, very efficiently. And the customer says, yes, if you guys can do it this way, we would love that. But we want to be 100% sure. And so they asked for the mock-up. And so the next step in the process would be, yes, we're going to do the mock-up. And so we are going to simulate the obstructions. So we'll design, we'll model, and we're going to build all the obstructions that are shown uh, here. And so we did that. We built all of the obstructions, some of them out of plywood, plywood walls that might simulate different things. Uh, sticking out from the wall or hanging from the wall. And then finally, we executed the mock-up with the, with the customer present. And so this just gives the customer a sense of assurance and confidence that Barnhart, Barnhart's method is the best and that Barnhart was, was able to do this job like we say we're going to be able to do. Yeah. So here's another example. So this would be taking a... Uh, heat exchanger uh, down a hallway in a nuclear facility. So again, same same story. They they wanted our method because our method was going to save them the most money, ultimately, in getting the plant turned on quicker. But they wanted to be 100% sure that we could do it. And so we actually uh, modeled up the facility using a laser scan. We actually had a surveyor come out to a warehouse and identify where the obstructions are on the floor of the warehouse so that we could build it uh, true to the way it was gonna be in real life. And so we set it up and we executed the mock-up with the customer present. So again, this just adds a lot of value to upcoming projects when, when, thing, when the method working is extremely critical. And sometimes, yes, the customer might pay extra for this mock-up, but the level of assurance that they get that the method, the efficient method, of removing equipment and replacing equipment, uh, that it will actually work. To have that assurance actually added a lot of value to their uh, upcoming outage. So that's all I have.
for proof load testing and mockups. I really appreciate uh, you listening in on the presentation today.